Hi, this is Deborah Christofferson. I play Sue Blevins on 911. You're listening to Fandom Family Chats. Welcome back to Fandom Family Chats. I'm Tiffany. I'm Amanda. I'm Bethany. And tonight we are talking 911 and 911 Lone Star. Woohoo! Oh, yeah. OG was a really good episode, but it went like so fast to me. It really did. It did. Mm hmm. Lone Star kind of drug for me this week, but also that was because I have a sick child at home and I was watching pause, watching pause, watching pause. And I, I thought I had watched the episode yesterday and in all reality, I had watched only 10 minutes of the episode. <laughs> oh. This is my crazy oh, no. mom life this week. <laughs> so today oh, I was no. like, I got to get through it because I got to talk about this tonight. And so today I was just like five minutes here, 10 minutes here, five minutes here. And it was a really good episode. And it was really, it was hard to keep stopping. <laughs> but I did it. I finished. It was a great episode. But it left you in suspense. Back to OG <laughs> before I start getting off on Lone Star. <laughs> right. We got plenty Gosh. to talk about soon. <laughs> that woman having that dream with her teeth falling out. Oh my gosh. That was so creepy. I could not figure that out until they like actually explained it. And I have seen like those tonsil stones before. I've seen like the viral even... videos of people like popping them out and stuff like that. It never crossed my mind that that's what it was. I, I couldn't figure thing. it out. I thought like, did she eat the the eraser accidentally and she was dreaming it was her too? <laughs> All I know is when I saw that immediately, I just had this urge to like go brush my teeth or something. I was like, what is happening? Get some mouthwash in there. I did not like it. Both of these, you know, this is this is very actually relevant, but it is going off a little bit, but it's to do with 911. I for the longest time, I've always known that Ryan Murphy of course made 911, but I've always said that like it's 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 a little bit crazy to me because it just doesn't feel like Ryan Murphy show. And I feel like ever since I said that, it's gotten like more Ryan Murphy Murphy ish. Is it, <laughs> haven't they got a little bit darker lately? <laughs> like, are we in a little darker stage? Yes. S- should somebody check on gross. check on him? <laughs> now, is it true that it's moving to ABC? Because I don't know. Only what OG like is apparently they're going to separate only OG, them, right? And I don't know. That's weird. This is really strange. I mean, it's to me. all owned by Disney, but. But still, why move one and not the other? I was wondering. And the that's original, cool. not even the spinoff. Yeah, that's yeah. the only, that's, I understand moving networks, shows do it all the time if they, you know, want to survive or need to survive or just, you know, for there's many different reasons for it to happen. But it just confuses me that they're only moving one. I'm like, mm-hmm. wait, they're like kind of a combo yeah. set. How do you just move one of them and not the other? Only if maybe in a, a month or two, they come back and say, Lone Star is moving over to ABC. We don't know. It could happen still. I have no idea. True. But because they didn't announce either way, they didn't say, "Well, Lone Star is staying on Fox." They just said it's renewed. Yeah. So you never know. No, we have no idea. So I know that's weird. I wonder how yeah. this is going to change the field because even though they're they're all the same, you know, have the same parent company. You know, Fox shows have their own style. ABC shows have their own style. You know, and I feel like ABC kind of has like at least for the comedic aspect that's in play like it has like a light feel to it you know even like the rookie like they deal with some really dark you know storylines because of the nature of you know the crimes and the bad guys but like there's always I mean it's just Nathan Fillion (laughs) but there's always like that oh I guess we're getting ahead of ourselves here too we'll talk a little bit about it from when we get closer to Lone Star but I realized now they're on ABC, like they should start doing more crossover episodes. Like a rookie 911 crossover would be fantastic. And you could like have it cross over with Lone Star because, you know, we already got part of the crew together. Like <laughs> that would be epic. That would actually be really funny because they <laughs> would technically be in the same universe. Yeah. Right. They just travel that up north and go happen- to Grey's Anatomy. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> So we're going to start the petition now. <laughs> we're see how far we can get this going. I don't see it happening because we barely ever got a 
cross over with 911 and 911 Lone Star and they're the they're, they're already the shows. Same. It's like yeah, not that one I feel like that was well we've gotten a, a couple tiny ones but it's just like you guys could yeah. like even that one the bigger one with the forest fire or whatever mm-hmm. they could have done that up more. Yeah. I just feel like they're just kind of like me and I'm like why everybody have obviously loves the crossover so we want to see crossover way more. Yeah. That's, That's the cool. only real crossover we got. Yeah. It's kind of sucky. Yeah. <laughs> I mean and then even like when Owen went to LA to like meet his brother there was absolutely no, like no crossover and even a medical crossover. emergency and still no <laughs> crossover and i was so mad why are you teasing us <laughs> why what are you doing like this is an opportunity why would you write it like this right and then not give us a crossover like that right? should not have been advertised as a crossover mm-hmm. it wasn't it wasn't i have gone way off and i need to step off my soapbox but i am really mad about this apparently don't worry oh, Maureen, no. I, won't, I won't curse this week oh, no. i got too oh. riled up last weekend just, just drink the more drink more coffee take it a deep breath i just get passionate about my tv shows and my crossovers <laughs> apparently <laughs> okay oh we need to go all the way back to this crazy teeth lady yeah because i'm that... not done talking about this because this was gross <laughs> and i would have okay. almost rather it been my teeth falling out because what they were pulling out of her throat oh it was so gross and the smell <laughs> him putting that mask up and apologizing no yeah <laughs> I was like, I'm sorry, but I need this. I'm sorry, but I need this. I was like, oh. I don't know what's worse. Like, just put it on and don't apologize, or like, don't say it. Like, I need this. Like, just say, pardon me, ma'am. I'm gonna wear this mask now. I would have made the excuse of like, you know, we're being like so close to each other's faces. I'm gonna put this on for both yeah. of our protection. Not like, Ooh, yeah, just things, things, girl. I know. I was like, just wear the mask. Don't tell me why. Oh. <laughs> oh no. So there's something called calcium deposits, which are like also I think they're known as tonsil stones. Is like their mm-hmm. another name oh, for great. them. And they're kind of like a like there are some weird world out there. I won't call you weird because, I mean, everybody has their own thing. But there is like the tonsil stone removal asmr videos people love out there i know don't look at me it's like the same thing as like the pimple popper okay i love asmr that is not the kind of asmr (laughs) that is disturbing i find out a lot of things when i'm researching (laughs) oh actually i really enjoyed the stories this week i feel like we've talked about enough about teeth lady she's just grossing me (laughs) out every time i think about it now I want to move on to the missing boy at the mall and how badly the storyline wow. irritated me. Oh, wow. Anybody's irritated or was I the only one irritated by this? I used I to like, complain a lot about 911, but I'm complaining this week about certain things. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, that's a lolly and pops. Like, I kind of wanted candy when I was watching that. <laughs> but I don't know. Like, I was, once I saw Athena, like, roll up to the mall, I was like, oh, I'm relieved now because, like, you know, whatever's going to happen you know it's like well she's she's in charge but i I mean i was laughing like i just could not have a serious bone in my body i'm (laughs) I'm really not usually like this about 911 i promise i love i love the show but the little boy just went to the candy shop and they have like (laughs) the entire mall shut down they have every unit possible going to this mall and this child has been missing for like less than two minutes like they didn't even look good she didn't even look well, into think, a store before she called 911 like i just feel I like it was a lot it was, it was like, like three feet from where she was actually standing and the, ch- the other the, oh my god the children were horrible actors i'm sorry i'm boy <laughs> i just need a shush tonight i want you to those just other kids were absolutely <laughs> useless <laughs> Like, well, just... because the one of the daughters did actually check the candy store. They're like, I know he I loves know. candy. Like, candy store. And she missed. I know he was hiding, but like 
think, you know, he's a kid, he's missing, he's not going to be standing there saying, here I am, or they wouldn't be looking for him anymore. So, and I understand in their panic and everything, but I'm wondering if maybe more time had passed, you know, enough time for the police to get there. You know, there was obviously like, you know, social media posts and other 911 calls. So like enough time for people to understand something was happening, Mm -hmm. you know, did they just, did it feel like it was shorter than what it was? Maybe, I don't know. Um, But yeah, exactly. Like it, it didn't seem you know she looked she didn't see him she was i'm thinking like if it was the mom maybe she would have followed up okay i checked these stores oh i'm gonna check this other store you know like super mom kicks in and and okay you know maybe she just was trusting that the kids would have found him if he was there you know i don't know the mom legit just stood in the middle of the floor and spun in circles like she She did nothing And I'm like, holy yeah. like she freaked out about having to order pretzels, first of all. And it just gets all complicated. And I feel I feel her. Trust me. I feel her. I get it. I'm a mom. I understand. It's frustrating. But I'd be mean, like, hey, you know what? How about let's not bring three children to the mall by yourself for like she said they were there for so many hours before. <laughs> and that you're like, just give him a kid snack. And he said. He wanted dessert. He said he wanted something sweet. So why I not hear that. So why not go and check in the freaking candy shop? Like Yeah, she was, should have gone herself afterwards. Yeah. It was just if she's gonna stand there, then I, I think that's you know, kind of like, okay, I'm checking these stores, we're dividing and conquering. The other kids check the other store, but now Oh, well, I understand if she's using her time and effort to check different stores, but at that point when she was just standing there in the middle, okay, well, let me double check. Maybe he is there. He wants, if he just told me he wants candy, let me double check. My, maybe my daughter missed him. She's still young or she's panicked. Yeah. You know, she put way I, too I think much she trust in those that, two little girls. I know. <laughs> they were the ones that let him. They were the ones that lost her in the first place. The first- <laughs> her. Lost him. So. Exactly. <laughs> exactly so i i don't know i think she just panicked and just assumed the worst and didn't occur to her that he could be eating candy in the corner her you know because i was thinking husband like that man yeah. just got like called out for no reason he's just sitting at work <laughs> pleasantly going about his day now all of a sudden he's accused of kidnapping <laughs> <laughs> after this child's been gone for a minute and a half <laughs> And it was funny because I can remember his name. I was like, what were they calling him? Like, everybody's like, Jaden. And I was like, it was Jordan, right? And I'm like, man, if I were in that mall, like, I would have been no- finding that kid. I'd be yelling out the wrong name. <laughs> and some al- random kid comes running. <laughs> and also, I'm sorry, but he only took one kid? <laughs> like, how I should- rude. <laughs> oh, I didn't even put that together. <laughs> I didn't think about that. <laughs> I was like, well, the- the do- it's too late for the daughters. Let's see if we can still help this kid. <laughs> <laughs> this is where my mind goes when i'm watching this show. I'm like well he, that was rude <laughs> like I, I don't think i'd ever get my feelings hurt about not being kidnapped but if like my parent took my brother but <laughs> left me i'd be like i'm a little hurt <laughs> i'm not, not in a bad way that's what i'm saying kidnapping's okay it's not i hate it but i mean it's a serious thing should be just laughing about it anyways <laughs> Wait, you're referring to the father selecting one child as over the other child <laughs> versus like loving all his children equally like, <laughs> holy moly but well, was- i will say on a positive note i did enjoy the trash pile call <gasps> oh my goodness that that was a cringy story <laughs> <laughs> It was funny. It was it was funny. I, I and I I missed what he was looking for. I know it was like worth like four million dollars, which made me understand why he was even digging in the trash in the first place. But it's like it's not even worth it. And I don't even remember what it was he was looking for. You know, his whole digging. modem or his whole uh, computer tower. Was that I, was computer- I had missed it too, so I was like, I hope Tiffany yeah. does because I have no idea. <laughs> I was like, that's um, that's a really weird episode of Antiques Roadshow. There, I was like, what's worth four million dollars that you just threw away? <laughs> it's like an inherited oh. like some sort of ancient family heirloom or something. What's going on? <laughs> okay, that makes sense. So it was his computer. I know, right? It's like I don't need this. <laughs> Me to go off these two lovely gentlemen. 
after we have Chim and Hen this episode. I love them, but again, Hen made me mad this week. Wow. <laughs> It made me mad this week. I feel like she came down way too hard on Maddie. After everything that Maddie has gone through and conquered and the relationship where it's standing now, I feel like she just kept putting some so much doubt into Chim's head. And I'm like, that's mm -hmm. like what like what what did Maddie do to you recently? <laughs> to right? make you like, like I thought they were pretty close, you know. I know. And it really just kind of threw me because it didn't feel like it didn't feel like Hen really talking. You know what I mean? It just didn't feel like it didn't hint, sound hen like at all. No, no, I feel like honestly, it was just bad writing this, mm -hmm. on this episode. I'm sorry for the same facts, but it was bad writing. They should have never, ever. That's not okay. And then you got like Buck, who is obviously getting mad about it. And I don't blame him, mm -mm. I don't blame him at all because it was rude but i did love their ring shopping oh i know I, it's funny because you know they show them like you know the trash pile and then instantly it's like what two days earlier and you see them in the ring store and you're like oh like we all know where it's going and suddenly you're like how did it like okay which way did it get there you know like how is it gonna end up in the pile <laughs> it's like oh <laughs> it's like instantly yep. like I definitely crazy. thought it was in the trash pile. Yes, me for a too. While. I was like, this is going to be a miracle because there's no, I mean, it's 911. They're really going to let Jin get away with not getting his ring back. Like, he's not going to lose that, you know? And then I'm like, how are they going to pull it off? Like, that's going to be like some huge miracle. Like, suddenly there's the rings. I, I couldn't figure out how they were going to get it back. Movie magic, but, but, just sitting there with the box open, shining in the moonlight. Yeah, exactly. Like pinging off some like Ken's glasses. I could see it. Yeah, exactly. It's the movies here. <laughs> yeah, that's classic. <laughs> yeah, I could totally see that. I was like, well, as in the trash pile, how are they going to do this? Oh, there you go. <laughs> Literally, that's what was in my mind. You described it. <laughs> as soon as I saw G playing with it, I knew what it was because my daughter is the same way. I can't have any sort of jewelry on. She steals it. Oh, and then runs away oh. with it. Oh no! That was my first thought. Uh, your daughter's got it, dude. Here. <laughs> See, I never, I never, ever, ever put the two and two together until I saw you her have it at the end. I thought he had grabbed the physical ring from her hand. I didn't realize that what he put in his pocket was the box. Mm -hmm. So I thought that he literally put the ring in his pocket without the box. I did too. And I, yeah, instantly I thought, oh. Well, it's just going to slip right out when he's on a call. And that's how it gets in there. He's at the call. It slips out of his pocket because it's not in the box. It's loose. And it never occurred to me. I didn't realize that he had put the box in his pocket until I saw G with it at the end. And I said, oh, oh like she still has it. Like, I really thought that he pulled the physical ring out of her hand. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, okay, that makes sense. This is how he's going to get it back. We all knew yep. the instant put in her hand that somehow or other G was going to be responsible for actually executing the proposal because he can't find the perfect way to do it <laughs> so she's oh going to do it for him somehow so on the then I was fire like, okay. truck them doing going through all the different types of proposals first of all I just kind of want to say for behind the scenes type of things I really loved how they filmed that of how they kind of they oh, went around they kind of did like a circle like the, mm -hmm. the filmography on this episode was really good there there i'll give you some props there it was really good it oh. was kind of something different than we usually mm -hmm. see from them of how they film in the truck and it was something kind of new and i liked it it felt more like a it was pretty conversation yeah it did it was pretty cool i wonder if maybe they have someone new on this i didn't look at the credits closely maybe there's somebody new like it could be part of the transition maybe if they're transitioning you know like like gilmore girls like season seven they had somebody different you know they were transitioning the networks oh, i wonder if maybe something we don't need that or not <laughs> no we do not need that that's not what i meant we're gonna keep going more seasons <laughs> take it back Stephanie. take it back <laughs> well no you see how you fix that is you just give gilmore girls more seasons and it's the same because both have more seasons 
Oh, oh we my just God. want more. That's all. They're getting too old for her to come back now. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm sorry. I mean, but... I don't know. Stars Hollow probably would be really nice. You know, just retired Stars Hollow. I mean, it must be a nice place. <laughs> this is the one where Rory puts Lorelai in the nursing home. <laughs> They played was it wiffle board all day? It was awesome. IRL. <laughs> was... IRL. <laughs> Just a reality show now of Alexis <laughs> and Lauren. <laughs> oh my gosh. How did we get off on Gilmore Girls? <laughs> it's Gilmore Girls. At least it's what we in. <laughs> we need a Gilmore Girls podcast soon. <laughs> we do. We need to. <laughs> let's have a what if gilmore's girl oh that would be the greatest that would be epic what like we know it will never happen but what if what if like what are our theories of like how could they do another season with me making it work i think that'd be fun we need to do that absolutely maybe during the summer i know marie's gonna listen to all this so just just putting it out there tiffany looks really thrilled to do it that would be fun, wouldn't it? I need to like yeah. think about my story. Like I need to like know, plan that's it That's what out. I'm doing now. I need to write a story. <laughs> different scenarios, different timeline. <laughs> We're all gonna come up with like, like Rory when she's like, "Here's the final draft," and you're in the lives. We're all gonna be like that. Here's our story. It's gonna be like a giant novel. Of this is what we think happens. <laughs> Okay. ours is gonna be much better than a year in a life because that one was so great yeah oh. at least yeah. we got to see like where are they now kind of you know oh yeah what, what would have yeah how it the place to like the storyline they took for rory's life oh gosh yeah and i think it's i don't just... think anybody like i don't think it was meant to be liked you were meant to want more for her you know and then she seemed so un rory like yeah yeah i don't i don't understand why that was like what they i know that's like what amy and dan wanted but like why i want to know like why why is that what you guys want why is this the poetic ending because i don't know why i feel like there's gonna be more of course like the final four words that they talk about so then it makes you feel like okay then that that truly is the end the end because she's always talked about those last four words but almost makes you feel like you know certainly that's not where I mean, you know, the whole season you're looking forward to, like, you know, when Rory has her career and she's out in the world, and then suddenly it's like, ooh, just fizzles out, you know? And it's just mm-hmm. kind of, it's, you feel, unless, you know, it could be the career, Rory's career is, in a sense, the world that she sacrifices for her child. The same way that Lorelai sacrificed everything of herself for Rory rory would probably sacrifice everything of herself for her own child so maybe that's representation of that like it's not anywhere near where you thought it was going to go just like with lorelei she never expected her life to go that way and suddenly this became a gilmore girls podcast Struck midnight. <laughs> the podcast turned into Gilmore Girls, <laughs> but that was my theory. Like maybe that's the parallel between Rory and Lorelai. You know, they both have a different didn't didn't get what they expected, but they sacrificed for their own child. <laughs> mm-hmm. Absolutely. Okay, so what was y'all's favorites like proposal ideas from the his fellow firefighter? Uh not particularly any of them <laughs> um, bobby would agree with that yeah, i like bobby how come all these sound like calls yes, they are. <laughs> i feel like that's what they know about proposals is what what they go to scenes and see what goes wrong how not to propose <laughs> <laughs> That oh was my hilarious. maybe that's why he didn't have it i know <laughs> that was like the perfect answer because you know that he wasn't going to take any of those you know suggestions but then he took it like a step forward like no those aren't not even not just bad, bad ideas those are dangerous <laughs> ideas. it's like wow <laughs> yeah i guess so <laughs> like, uh, 
no <laughs> yeah i'm not happening <laughs> not doing that but i am really bummed that i thought it was gonna like happen at the end of the episode like i thought like maddie was gonna like find the ring you know like while she was sitting there playing with g <laughs> That's yes. what I thought too. And I'm like, oh, that'd be so cute. And it ended, I was like, no. And we got no proposal. The whole episode mm-hmm. about the proposal didn't get the proposal. Gotta wait. Okay. It's not over, right? There's more episodes, yeah. right? Okay. Oof. We better get it there's... next week. Hmm? I have a feeling it's gonna be like the cliffhanger. I I don't I don't know. I'm kind of hoping that she finds it in the play area, like in the toys, but like you don't want her to find it by herself, you know, because yeah. you don't want else to miss the moment. He has like, to be there for it. Like, yeah, I mean, there is a family, you know. I know how I want it to go. Yeah, he's too. playing with G with the dollhouse, and then he mm-hmm. sees it, and she comes walking in, and he's already on his knees playing with oh, G. So, see, there, you go. there we go. Oh. That's it. That's Listen, it Fox. I think that's a sweet proposal. Honestly, I don't think it needs to be this huge, big, elaborate thing. I don't think it needs to be a big and huge either because I feel like it's already like impromptu like timing wise it's like the only reason they're even talking about this is because of the whole tax thing and so I feel like if he did something like huge and big it would kind of be a little bit more awkward or pressure rather than like something small and just be like what seems like spur of the moment you know what I mean? Like more of a spur of the yeah, moment sen- engagement rather than long and thought out, in my opinion. Yeah. Sentimental. Yeah. Quiet. Yeah. I think so. I wouldn't, I don't want him to like, you know, rent out the stadium or something s- like flash mob. No, like that. no, not at all. Unless it's a Steely Dan, you know, that could work. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, those are. I love watching the videos of other people doing it. I just don't want it for Maddie and Jim. No. <laughs> it's I do love those flash mob videos. They're so fun. I know. I love a good flash mob. I'm all here for it. But I just don't oh, feel yeah. like that's very Maddie and Jim. No. So it's not. It's not at all. I, I think it's going to be, like you said, it's going to feel spontaneous. It's got to be sentimental. It's not going to be flashy in and of itself. It's just going to be like really um deep for them but it doesn't have to be like you said flashy you yeah. know no flash mobs <laughs> no flash mobs <laughs> we need a good flash mob every once in a while that would be actually know, right? fun i think that's actually all for variety tonight, episode. not me for this episode oh awesome <laughs> mosey on over to texas now <laughs> uh all right so we could not find the preview for og no. None of us could find it. We have no idea if there's an is there an episode next week? Like we have we don't know. We cannot be, but... find it if we can't figure out what's going on. I don't so, even know what day it is. So <laughs> I'm like, if we get a new episode next week, awesome. If it's done for the season. <laughs> Thanks. I mean, for I'm gonna be really mad at that cliffhanger, but you know, whatever. Yeah. We at least know we're getting ne- another season, so there's been a lot of season finales this week, so I wouldn't be surprised. I know that's what's making me sound. I know, and I think a lot of shows are ending like a couple of weeks sooner. Usually, they go to like the end of May. It's like the beginning of May, so I'm like, mm-hmm. well, now we got the writer like, strike. We'll Everything's gonna start going halting. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. next year will next year. Who next week will be a mystery? I think <laughs> you, we're just gonna have to it. sit there on Monday night and wait to see if something comes on the TV. Let's it's just gonna be dead air. <laughs> so exciting. Just nothing. nothing took its place it's just empty yeah it's <laughs> empty that's static i was really excited to see owen's brother again this week i didn't know he was going to be on that wasn't advertised that yes. was a fun that was a super fun surprise so getting into lone star i really i really did love seeing owen's brother again <clears throat> i'm trying to think of i'm just pausing so i'm trying to think of the actor's name because i really like him uh, chadlow yes Chad. i really <laughs> like him and i was happy to actually see him again and it's kind of creepy that yes. we were just talking about the crossover thing and that's the only time that that was our other good crossover was going to see him in la yeah 
but That's it, right. was, it was good to see him this week i'm kind of sad we didn't get to see uh Lindsay. who's the what's her name one tree hill kendra. kendra thank you Lindsay from one tree hill aka kendra i was a little bummed we didn't get to see her this week but i guess his brother kind of makes up for it a little bit and tk gets to meet his uncle for the first time which was really cute how excited he was i know <laughs> that was cool yeah and they Me. got it uncle yeah tk got his journal and then owen got what did owen get he got the bottle of wine but he also got like was it his knife like what was it oh yeah it was some sort of item that he always was trying to get when he was a child i can't i didn't understand what it was it was like in a little pouch thing so i thought it might be yeah might be a a knife but i couldn't really tell what it was but he got a couple of things from his dad, which was really, I guess, more than he could have ever really thought he would get. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Which was nice. That was nice. I mean, it felt it felt like there was, you know, resolution in that, you yeah. know, sentiment, something to hold on to. Like there wasn't any regret. It was just like a sweet gesture. I think it was received very sweetly. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it was very nice. Not... It was not sad. It was a little sad at the end when we figure out well, he yeah. was Huntington. I was gonna say, unfortunately, he shared something else with that him. moment. <laughs> and like now, I'm kind of scared. Like, does that mean like Owen can get it? Because well, okay, I did see the preview right for this. Ep- mm-hmm. I, didn't I see think the previews. Is he getting tested? I, they didn't show him getting tested, but they show tk basically in tears saying if my dad has it tk saying that then it's a possibility that he received it so pretty much yep. like if owen tk is going to get it and so he's in tears and you know carlos is just trying to reassure him so it's kind of showing like next season they're gonna i mean next week <laughs> next week yeah. you know um uh, maybe it's hinting at you know owen's gonna check and see if he's he's got the gene too you know and then that would determine whether tk will inherit the gene also Oy. so how scary I, very scary i don't i don't think they're going to go that far with this storyline but i think it's just insanely um sad that they did that i was like extremely disappointed for for you know owen's brother i was excited yes finally mm-hmm. and then he, he did that and i was like no like you're gonna because it's you know they're not going to show something simple like that and then oh whatever and then blow it off like it's going to lead to something bigger yeah. in the storyline and i'm thinking like why would you do why can't you just let them be happy <laughs> you know yeah. enjoy brother relationship why are you doing why are you doing this to him you know it's it, was it like, is it was almost felt like he was losing his brother all over again mm-hmm. it's scary it was sweet he wants to spend more time with owen yeah no, that was I just really- got a notification pop up on my phone. 911 Lo- Lone Star Boss teases TK and Carlos wedding. Tragedy will strike. What? Let these no. people get married. What? My goodness. Oh. This tragedy I will strike see. at their wedding. Will at their know, wedding? Just popped up. Okay, that's really weird that this 911 thing just popped up on my phone as we're talking about 911. Is your phone like listening to probably oh, look i'm looking at mine Here's i'm like what you're asking for <laughs> oh my God. mine's not notifying me that's that's kind of creepy though i usually get those <laughs> notifications too so i'm like sitting here waiting for my like pop-up oh, okay it says what's going to happen is tragedy will strike and the entire thing will be put in question <gasps> let them be happy stop it stop it right now stop messing with them too He's so mad you know if they were if they were going to do some sort of dramatic thing with it you know where there's uh not a happy ending or saving it would be something like a you know a disease that would hit him later so they still get to have their happy life now with you know if they were going to do that it's like you don't want to kill off your main characters because then they're like gone right there but like if mm-hmm. you were going to kill off your main character at least let him live his whole life out before well, I guess that's what you we know? can hope for, so that but would, that would be the way they would 
<laughs> versus not usually like, that you know, nice. letting... They're not. <laughs> They're not. <laughs> They're mean. Nope. Mean, mean people. Well, let's talk about a transplant ring. This was a crazy story that I have not seen done in quite a while, actually. So I was not excited for this storyline. I don't want to say it like that, but like it was kind of refreshing to like have something kind of new that hasn't been something on like, one of our shows lately. <laughs> but like the transplant ring, it, it, it's, it is a serious problem that we really don't hear much about sadly and like this stuff happens every day it's terrifying it was nice to see grace doing uh something like did actual in-person work instead of just on the phone yeah it was it was nice cool to see, see a lot field. of grace yeah oh yeah absolutely. although she rather, really wasn't the smartest this episode didn't make the best I choices on this one. i i agreed with judd it was not it was not smart i understand she's trying to make a better world but you gotta you gotta make sure that you're safe and you're doing things right she was Uh, when judd pulled up after the bar (laughs) i thought she was gonna she was like oh no (laughs) and he slams that truck door i was like "Uh uh-oh she's in trouble (laughs) it's like what (laughs) That was crazy because I realized like everybody's there, but Judd in mm-hmm. okay, ouch. <laughs> I, I am <laughs> kind of surprised like she didn't like call Judd like after she called the detective and after she couldn't get a hold of Carlos. She should have called 911 so she, much sooner. 911, Judd. I mean, there was other yeah. options. I know like all the people she knows. Yeah. All of them. What? <laughs> You like there was just anyone? so much more to go and she's like i just called the police no ma'am you called two people <laughs> yeah that's it and she wasn't even sure you know like oh, it's a voicemail and someone that i don't even know is gonna take me seriously it's like no that's not like no. come on no like she- you shouldn't have gone but if you were gonna go don't go by yourself call 911 make sure you have backup like he's yeah. not gonna leave if you give yourself an extra three minutes you know to make sure that you're not yeah. gonna, you know i did not worth it then i'm not gonna trust somebody named after who tried to kill peter rabbit not gonna do it he was mcgregor i did um, not trust that guy one freaking bit his like, name was mcgregor i didn't even notice that his name's mcgregor officer mcgregor or detective oh. mcgregor you know about adam baldwin yeah Okay, I didn't realize it was McGregor. I was just like, that's Adam <laughs> I was just fangirling so hard and you hear his name. <laughs> I did like him, but even by the end of the episode, like it's his face that I'm like, I still don't know if I can trust you. I don't know where they're going with that because when she called him and said, tell them this is where I'm going to be, that expression, I was like, oh, he is in on this. That's what I thought what? too. I, I was like, totally believing that he was in on it that that's yeah. why he was handling things the way he was because he was crooked and he was just and yep. i was like whoa and i think maybe that's what they wanted you to think it had been. you know i was pleasantly surprised that he wasn't you know they seem yeah i almost get like well if, if he's not gonna be if they're gonna have opposition with each other then i almost kind of want it to be that he's in on it you know it's like just let him be all the way <laughs> bad you know but i'm glad that he wasn't because that gave up opportunity for the future for them to have you know positive you know because i really enjoyed his character this week yeah absolutely it's like okay if you're not going to put it behind bars then then make him a regular (laughs) you know they're they seem to find resolution between each other okay they're not gonna be there's not you know i mean there's probably always gonna be you know but it's like okay (laughs) Yeah. he's not a bad guy he's a good guy they make peace with each other let's do this let's make him a regular like that would be amazing mm-hmm. you know no absolutely he was i enjoyed his character this week as like a villain but that's honestly yeah. what i thought he was going to like be and do from now on is like kind of be a villain so when he came and like rescued her i was like pleasantly surprise and like i was like oh okay like i i like that like that was 
<laughs> that was it was a good like twist because i didn't i thought it was like judd coming through that door or something i did not expect mcgregor to come through the door yeah that was like either. the last that person one. i thought that was coming <laughs> Mm -hmm. i didn't know what was happening but i was not expecting yeah mm -mm. he was pleasantly surprised and I, that and that i guess was good writing because they made you think oh he's totally a bad guy Oop, surprise he's really a good guy and he's gonna be all out oh, here yeah. so that was cool this you know? this episode really was well done i had a lot of complaints in og sorry but i did but lone star i don't i didn't i don't have as many complaints Amanda, you and I know everything's better in Texas. Exactly. <laughs> That's exactly. why. That's why Lone Star is so much better. <laughs> oh, it's awesome. I'm glad that if they were going to have a spinoff series, that they they set it in Austin. I mean, I thought that was so cool. You know, so it's fun. Like I know that. Like when they're Austin's I mean, weird. Ryan Murphy's yeah. weird. Well, that's true. If you're thinking, uh, that's true. If you're trying to think of a Texas city, your brain's going to think Austin before it thinks of somewhere else, you know? But I would say like Austin or Dallas, I think would be the two main cities yeah, Dallas. to think of. I Austin, think so Houston or Dallas? Houston, yeah. Houston. Well, Houston and Dallas are like the biggest, you know, I would think. Yeah. Well, Houston, Austin, and Dallas, I think are the three that yeah. people would think the most because they're bigger, you know, so those three. But I guess Austin's a little bit. Austin won. It won the the thing. <laughs> it did. I'll be there. I'll I'll be there in two weeks. That's perfect. And keep your eyes peeled for Carlos and TK. And you're good to go. <laughs> <laughs> They're not real. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I could put myself in a position to call nine one one. And be like, you no. guys aren't them. You're not them. Why are you you want not the 126 them? guys? I was like, you're not the 126. <laughs> you're not Rublo. <laughs> what is this? Who are you? Where's Judd? <laughs> like, oh man, we got another crazy one. <laughs> we have a section just for. I was kidding viewers of the show oh man okay organ transplant ring <laughs> all right so the, even the, the way they found out that it, like let's start at the beginning of this because it, they really did this well like i was saying so we use the car crash in the tesla first of all i thought it was going to be like one of the driveless ones like you know i kept saying there's no driver i thought it was like oh. those the, the cars be like that are driving boat. people with no people well, no. and then especially it's austin you have the tesla factory there so it would make sense yeah yeah know. no exactly that they, they do test them there so i honestly thought that just just kind of what that was going to be but then we have this guy out and as soon as they lifted that shirt and i saw that i was like uh-oh that definitely looks like a botched black market job done and it was yeah that's some scary stuff right there yeah and that was when they showed the preview last week and you knew something significant was happening in that crash i don't know if they actually showed the incision or not i didn't catch it but you could tell that they were trying to you know imply that something really significant was happening here and like now you know because you're watching the scene you're thinking like this is not just a normal car accident it's not just a normal plot line like this is something dark and this is something deep you know it is yeah. what you know instantly and of course they're thinking that you know he's fleeing the hospital or something they're like get the transplant team back and check their patients you know they're going there first but you know obviously that there didn't lead to anywhere there's no leads on that it's mm -mm. something more sinister it's insane then we have like poor lexi this girl broke my heart this week and they did her dirty like why why did they why did they do that why yeah. couldn't she have survived like that was so so messed up that was pretty hard i think it was the catalyst that grace needed to just like really i mean she was going to see it through anyway but if there was any question as how far she would go like i think that was like the point of no return for her but i i'm thinking that like okay there was a way of them not charging her but 
they could have gotten the charges dropped or you know she wasn't facing any consequences yeah. yet she's still sorry. oh now we found out she's telling the truth yay she's innocent yeah. and that was recovered the whole time like that would have been great it you was know, horrible Lord, i felt so much. bad it was hard and also grace insane. using her own picture mm-hmm. i was just as mad as judd that was, was that was insane i was like i'm a ma'am no ma'am but i guess Mm -hmm. it did help her in the long run because i mean she wouldn't have been really able to meet up with him at the bar if she had a completely different face another reason why she should have used a fake picture (laughs) it would have kept her away from the bar but yeah exactly it did fit her plan but yeah i mean they they took down an entire organ transplant mission was it ring yeah like that's a huge deal not only finding the what i don't know what they what you technically call him a mule who gets the women from one place to another but they also catching the doctor doing it that was a i mean literally in the act yeah like were they waiting on grace do you think yeah the woman was already asleep Mm -hmm. she gonna leave her asleep though (laughs) yep the guy was very confident he was getting grace back there that was insane and mike was so smooth who else found mike a little attractive this week and it was kind of some red flags right (laughs) (laughs) it's supposed to be the wolf in sheep's clothing so they purposely were having you know the guy the character was meant to be charismatic because he was trying to lure you know very he was trying to lure them in yeah, it worked. And then instantly, like on a dime change, it's like, you know, so you gotta be wise as serpents and gentle as doves. It's, you know, mm-hmm. it's a scary world out there. Yeah, yeah, that was and I did not see Grace switch those drinks, by the way. I even tried to I didn't watch. Either. And I, I was like, boy, that's it. taking a long time. Yeah, I didn't that's see it. That's what I was thinking, too. I, I was like, she's yeah. not feeling it yet? I was like, why is she, why? And I'm going, why did you just drink that if you know? Like, I yeah. know Grace knows, like, why would you drink it? I was getting so mad at her. Sorry, Grace. <laughs> <laughs> well, in her defense, or in our defense, everyone else was getting mad at her, too. So, <laughs> yeah. Everybody I was wonder, mad at her. Yeah, that was, that was insane. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking that when they filmed it, they didn't actually show her switch the drinks in the first scene. And then they filmed something separate with her switching the drinks for the flashback to show the audience yeah. what happened i didn't see it either no they no. I, I swear they did because i i was like well, i didn't rewind it and watch it a second time but i was watching her hands back there because i was like surely she's gonna switch those drinks i right. know like he was being uh, and also by the way mike not as smooth as he thinks he is because why don't you just reach over there and give me one of those napkins and then you hear yeah. a dink as the pill hits the eye so i was like okay (laughs) like that was very obvious like there's peripheral vision like there's no way nobody like hello how'd that work (laughs) so mike's just going all off his looks i swear (laughs) hey Uh, that's probably what he was doing yeah you know what who knows but grace got him she took him down grace also needs to carry some like mace or another form of protection rather than a car key in between her fingers please next time <laughs> i'm like as a, stoic, you know it did kind of concern me that as a 911 operator her and judd being as her husband and everything that that that's the amount of weaponry that she had not that i ever thought like i know she would never like carry a gun or anything but i thought like a taser or some mace or just some like simple things like that i feel like if i was gonna like walk out the door and like go meet like mike from the dating app i would probably like grab my mace as i was walking out the door and just like stick it in my purse you know something stop by cvs grab some yeah (laughs) i don't know (laughs) it just yeah it none of that made sense i think she was just not thinking straight that it just i I don't know i just that whole thing was like what oh she (laughs) made me so nervous Mm -hmm. but 
she's grace and of course she kicked butt and she was amazing and i love her even more than i loved her at the beginning of the episode somehow oh i don't know how they keep making me fall more and more in love with grace and judd (laughs) i know i think i think grace and judd like their whole family they're just awesome like i want to like i want them to be real so i can go to austin I'm going to go to their church and afterwards we're all going to go have lunch at Grace and Jed's house and then we're going to have some coffee and play some video games like it's just going to be a really cool weekend but they're not real so like it's <laughs> hardly any time if you're just you know <laughs> oh darn just ruined my weekend plans I know right <laughs> if only y'all were real <laughs> oh man so the last kind of thing I'll talk about is McGregor kind of redeeming himself like we 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 touched on it a little bit earlier he comes in he saves grace i'm guessing he didn't even try to wait on carlos he went and saved her and then i still did not trust him even after all of it It, but i feel a little bit better now after like his conversation with judd and concerning grace was one hilarious two much needed and three i was so in love with it i was like yes you understand grace now (laughs) i think uh, that conversation i felt was like the resolution that they needed to like wrap everything up in a bow that's Mm -hmm. why i'm saying now he could be a regular character because you kind of know where they stand like okay he's not like the evil bad guy that's about to go to jail you know he's not the guy that's you know they're gonna always have friction with not that they won't have any in the future they might but he's not you know their enemy not the bet not you know he's not gonna be a criminal not criminally but you know he's not their enemy so it was kind of like that nice resolution of like now you have an opportunity for a path forward you've created pavement (laughs) you've created Mm -hmm. a road (laughs) now y'all can just walk it (laughs) exactly exactly cool. oh my gosh okay so i honestly i think that was kind of all for today i think um, so i think we kind of okay. covered everything there was it was regular long episodes but not as many topics to touch on yeah i feel is- like they kind of focus more on just one or two things versus like you know half a dozen nine one one calls yeah exactly Right, i'm excited well, about next week though because there's gonna be some more explosions yeah tommy looks like she's uh <laughs> in trouble oh god i'm not oh. excited about that part i mm. blocked that out of my memory thank you for reminding me i'm just kidding <laughs> i can conveniently put that out of my mind there's a warehouse explosion and i'm sorry but warehouse explosions n- in any show never turn out okay and so this one actually has me like terrified a little nervous and then oh, you ever, and like TK when you see both people. i'm just i'm i'm yeah. nervous about next week yeah but i mean i'm, I'm gonna go in hurt. with positivity it's okay yes absolutely Everything's okay tommy's okay it's always fine it's like his daughter already died it. she can't die too don't do that yeah you can't you can't orphan the kids you don't just can't orphan the shining twins <laughs> don't oh, do no. that very rude so that's all we have for tonight we have talked about lone star og and lone star 911 do not forget to check out all of our socials and facebook group which is 911 911 family fan club uh tune in next week for more episodes sundays are our fox nights where we talk about obviously what we're talking about today because it's 911 day Tuesday is our NBC night where we discuss all three Chicago shows when they are actually on and stop skipping weeks. If not, we will talk about something on Netflix, on one of our older shows. We have a lot of fun stuff coming up. And Wednesday nights are our ABC nights where we dig into Grey's Anatomy and Station 19. Same as Chicago. I think they'll be back sometime soon. Hopefully. I think this week is going to be a new episode. So please subscribe and we will talk to you later. Bye. Bye. Loving our content? Subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to share our podcast with your family and friends. We want to continue the conversation with you. 
You can find us on Instagram, Twitter, or TikTok under Fan and Family Chats, or one of our ever-growing Facebook groups by searching Family Fan Club. We've also launched a website, Family Fan Club 2021 at Wixsite.com. You can email us there and keep checking it for announcements and merch coming soon. And of course, be sure to tune in every week for new episodes discussing all your favorite shows. <laughs>